All right, welcome back to this Expedition STEM. Uh, I am here at the National Day of Civic Hacking in Charlotte, and I'm here with DJ Patel. Um, DJ, what is your role at the White House? Uh, so I'm the U.S. Chief Data Scientist, and our mission is to responsibly unleash the power of data to benefit all Americans. Awesome. And so uh, for those that don't know, and I didn't really know this term before, uh, there's a term out there called data scientists. DJ was actually one of the people that coined that term. Um, so my question is, what is data science and what do data scientists do? Mm -hmm. So data scientists are these people who have a little bit of tech, a little bit of nerd, a bunch of geek, ability to communicate, but the real power is they make data come alive and they use that data to help you become smarter every day. Okay. And they also use that data to build new products. When you think about a self-driving car, the thermostats, the mobile apps that you might use to navigate from one place to another, the people behind that are data scientists. Okay. And um, for your position at the White House, uh, like what, um, so you help promote that uh, nationally. Um, is there any specific sort of set of data that you're interested in getting out there? Well, all of this stems actually from the president. The president is one of the most data-driven people I've, I've ever met. And, you know, I think he saw this at the beginning of the power of this with his campaigns and the using data to really transform engagement with uh, the rest of society. Okay. And from that, what our role is, is we help really think about the policies, the laws, and the rules as we go through the process about how can data really benefit everybody in a way that is responsible, security, privacy, all those things. Hmm. So just a couple of quick examples is, how do we use data in healthcare? How do we use that data to come up with the idea of using your genome to get you the very specific tailored medical treatments that you need? Hmm. That's, you know, primary the foundation of what we need to, to really deliver the next solutions for cancer. Uh, but it's not just that, it spreads all the way to climate and how do we think about right. climate change. Hmm. All right, and so another question about data science is when data scientists are looking for patterns, uh, do they already have a hypothesis in mind? Are they looking to develop one? And are there any sort of protections in place to sort of prevent a biased outcome? Mm -hmm. like? I, I think that, you know, maybe this cancer can be found uh, with this set of data. Um, if I go looking for that, am I going to run into like a problem if I find it? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Oh, just a bunch of really good questions in there. So the first is, when, as a data scientist, I'm just looking to get comfortable with the data, try to see what patterns there are. I may have a hypothesis, but the other times the data may you know, give me a surprise. And, and there's something that's beautiful about getting surprised by the data that says, ah, I didn't think of that. That's really a cool insight. If that connects with this, there's a strong correlation. And we're seeing this done in really remarkable ways right now. Uh, using IRS data, an economist was able to show that if you take a kid from high poverty and move them to low poverty, you could see as much as 40% lift in their median income over their lifetime. Wow. I mean, it's astonishing. Yeah. We, we are also finding when we bring large data sets, we can start to see the genetic patterns of things like schizophrenia. Hmm. So how do we take that and do even more? And the other problem that you raised in there, which is we have to do this responsibly. That's why in our mission, the word responsibly is so important and upfront there. Mm -hmm. That means with privacy, that does with security. And many of the things that I've been personally focused on are that. For example, if you're a data scientist or you want to train to be a data scientist, you need to make sure that your class or whatever you're taking has data ethics or just ethics integrated into the core program. It can't just have ethics as an elective. Because just because we can with data doesn't mean we should. Right. Those ideas. One of the reports we just released was both the opportunity and the challenges faced with data and in the intersection of that with civil rights and how do we think about transparency of algorithms and what we call fairness by design, building in processes and procedures to evaluate that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and this is an area where we are going to have to continue to keep 
iterating and digging deeper into to make sure that we're doing right by every single person through the use of data, because it can be empowering. Right. We also have to make sure that we're doing it responsibly. That's great. Uh, if, if anyone is interested in getting into data science, because how, how relatively new is, is this field? Yeah. Well, I, I like to say it goes back to, to Copernicus and Kepler, because <laughs> they right. were some of the first data scientists. They right. took observations and they found things. Right. The reason I think data science has gotten this really new reawakening mm -hmm. is because the technology that's associated that we can do data, we can use data, mm -hmm. we can make things. We have machine learning, we have artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. these, these ideas that we can build a product that is fundamentally based on data. The self-driving car is going to be a data product. Mm -hmm. Because it's using all like the sensors, sensors and, and everything. All but that stuff. you know, most of the data products we use, the most powerful data product we use every day, we open up our phone and we look at the weather forecast. Right. Petabytes of data, supercomputers, mm -hmm. itty bitty little icon. Right. But it tells us how to live our life. Right. Now, a pilot needs a very different type of data product mm -hmm. for the weather. So we have a different levels of sophistication depending on what we need. Hmm. That is the, the kind of the key thing that data enables to happen. Okay, great. Uh, if, if kids are interested in getting into the field or, or even older uh, adults, um, what is sort of the, is there like a general background that data scientists have? Or if you're about to go to college, like what sort of program would you want to get into? Yeah, so one of the things that people don't really recognize is that anybody can do this. Yeah, I, I started off at community college, uh, and I eventually went on to become a math major and then got my doctorate in mathematics. Mm -hmm. But I've seen economists, I've seen biologists, mm -hmm. I've seen people in the humanities who are phenomenal at this. Data is what facilitates a conversation. And so you can play with data, you could also be the person that's helping tell the story around the data, okay. the narrative around this. If you want to do something with data, no better place to go than data.gov, just literally data.gov, and you will find almost 200,000 data sets that the federal government produces that are online for you to play with. Wow, you can is it constantly them. updated? Constantly updated, Awesome. all the time. It's, it's, it's USA's data, wow. it's all of our data. Weather data, some health information, uh, all sorts of different types of things. Uh, it, that's great, phenomenal data to play with and just start exploring. The other one is, just looking out here, is playing with data in your local town to understand what's happening. Right. That could be everything from crime patterns to where are the potholes. But when we look at that data, we find really not only interesting patterns, but a way to ask ourselves, what do we want our community to look like? Mm. Data works best when, with two things when it's used in a conversation, and two, when it's a team sport. When you work in a partnership together at something like this, you will find something amazing that the data can unlock, right. and it can be transformative. Yeah, this is my first uh, civic hacking event, and um, it's definitely uh, inspirational, seeing that everyone's interested in their city, and how to make their city better, and what can we do to help our community, and it's by using this this data that's out there, that's already there. That's right. You just got to figure out how to use it. You just got to show up. Yeah. You just got to come on out to one of these and play along. Yeah. Become part of the, the most modern form of the American barn raising. Like this is what the barn raising looked like if it was digital. Right. We're reinventing our local communities right here. Right. And everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. All around the country. People are doing this around the world. And if you're a student or a person that's out there and you're thinking like, hey, how do I get one of these Silicon Valley style internships? I'll tell you what. The best way to learn how to code and be top tier is just spend time doing this every weekend. You will get phenomenal. You will be top notch just by doing this. And if not, just, you know, even if you're not developing your own skills, you're also developing like team working and team, team building. And, Absolutely. you know, I think uh, programmers sort of get like the uh, stereotype of like working in a dungeon by themselves or whatever. But, you know, interacting with people, you get to learn how to work yeah. with people. You get to hear their ideas, find out about their different backgrounds, that sort of thing, and get, you know, think outside the box. Yeah. You know, you th we think of scientists, we get that, that uh, well, we're quiet. Right. <laughs> There's nothing quiet back right. here. 
this 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 is pure raw energy and enthusiasm mm -hmm. to make the world a better place. Right. Where are you going tonight? Uh, I'm next off to Miami for another great event where Miami is hacking for change at National Day of Civic Hacking, and then I'm going to race back to DC. Uh, for our final event and I'm going to be looking forward to seeing uh, much more of what people are doing not only tomorrow but continuing on building on this energy for local communities everywhere around the nation. Great. All right. So uh, check out data.gov. Check out the other open data sets that are available in your community. I didn't even know that communities had open data, yeah. but uh, talking with some of these people, uh, Charlotte has one as well as other counties. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have more interviews here at National Day of Civic Hacking. Uh, thanks again, DJ, for stopping by. My and pleasure. we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.